Oh boy, what do you do? I don't know, but oh boy. Yeah, on call never ceases to be fun. Oh, how to fix a leak in oil line online. So first, very calmly, and you know, just very calmly, close that service valve to the oil reservoir. You don't want to lose any more. Walk over to here, switch off your switches. Now no compressors will be running. Then we're gonna go through, take off all the caps and all the oil lines. Take up your service wrench. We're gonna change. We're gonna close all the oil lines on them. Uh, the oil uh, equalization line and the other line. Why? Well, if we look at this, this comes down to your oil filter through, and you can see it goes into all the oil. So it's on the compressor side where the leak is. So. Remember the oil, the oil is hooked up to the crankcase side of the compressor which is hooked up to the suction side um, of the system. So if all these are open you're going to just be pouring suction pressure right into these lines. So even if you isolate it from the oil side you're just going to have suction pressure blasting through these lines. If you don't isolate it, you know, it's not going to work. So we're going to go through, we're going to isolate it. now. I'm going to have to, after you isolate the whole thing, go to your truck, get your vacuum pump. Now, those of you that are screaming at the screen, why don't you try to just tighten up the bolt? I did try to tighten up the bolt. So what I would recommend doing is, um, so I isolated it at the reservoir, isolated it here, and, um, and try to tighten up that bolt. So, I mean, well, the nut. So what I did was I actually loosened up the nut a little bit tried to see if maybe it was over tightened or something and uh then i it would got worse when i loosened it up so then i tightened it down and it's already leaking so what's the worst that can happen so i tightened the dickens out of it and uh somebody must have well looks like what happened is you can see cat litter maybe somebody came and tried to tighten it a new guy or something i don't know maybe it's just this isn't the first time this has happened to me. I've posted other videos on it. Oil lines, you know, vibration and stuff, they just they just go. So, but anyway, so that nut is no good, so we're gonna have to reflare it and pull the vacuum. And uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, remember, just be calm, okay? Like, don't risk your life for bagel bites, okay? Like. If you lose your job, you lose your job. If you got a wife and kids to get home to, get home to them. Okay, just, you know, do what you can. You know, just go through, do your thing, okay? Also, I went upstairs. I got some tidy cat litter from uh, the pet section of the store. Just tell the manager, hey, I'm taking these. And if they say, you know, like, oh, you gotta pay for those, say, all right, well, good luck with your $10,000 worth of product loss, or you can give me $40 worth of cat litter. I'm going to spread it around on the ground so I don't slip and fall, get hurt. Now I got more issues going down. And we're also going to have to add, you know, probably, well, I don't know how many gallons this rack is, but I'll take a look in a minute. Also, even look right there. It looks like that's even might be leaking from in there to actually no, it's just traveling down there um, but if you start to feel sick vacate and leave because there is literally mist mist oil in the air so um we come up here and we look sometimes it has how much oil is in there now nah, there's no oil in there so i'm going to take a look that's filled with oil filled with oil Fill with oil and fill with no not quite filled with oil so we're probably going to put in maybe a gallon maybe two uh i think i only have one gallon on my truck so it is what it is but we're going to try to get one site glass floating um in this oil uh reservoir right there so anyway we're going to lay out the cat litter and uh, we're going to get going on this so keep moving forward so as you can see the leaking stopped. Now I can still feel a little bit of pressure coming out right there. 
but um, no more oils throwing out because now the pressure's going down to nothing because it's, it is a pretty large leak. And so after you do the leak, you also got to check your refrigerant level as well. Uh, I probably need to dump, you know, 20 to 50 pounds into this rack. Um, let's see what kind of refrigerant in it up on this tag. 404A. So we'll just get moving. Recommendation, use these tidy cats. I am not sponsored by Tidy Cats, but these are fantastic because you can sweep it up, throw it back in it, and then dispose of it properly. It's just my basic flare kit from Amazon, like 35 bucks. So, I got my vacuum pump, some gloves, some rags, some, you know, big blue micro leak detector, mini pads. Um, oh, extension cord. I could use extension cord. Uh, we're gonna go in there and so we don't really need a recovery machine because all the refrigerants already bled out of the line now also like make sure that you talk to uh make sure that you talk to um your what's it called to the manager so i had to shut down the rack told the manager you're gonna start getting alarms all in the rack um and uh so yeah just communicate that clearly just say hey you know, uh, you have a major issue, we have to shut everything down. And, uh, you know, depending on the store, typically you got about an, you know, you got to think these cases go into defrost for an hour, right? So a lot of them, it's like an hour before they start alarming, something like that, especially on the medium temp side. So, you know, I'm not too worried. A lot of them nowadays have doors. So I just told her, you know, should be up and running in about an hour. So before we go crazy and cut off the flare, let's see, you know, if the flare is cracked. Because the truth is, maybe, you know, it's possible somebody maybe tried to change oil filter or something. I don't know, and didn't do it right, or maybe it just got cockeyed, I don't know. But if we look, the flare actually looks, um, it looks fine. There's nothing that looks wrong, so I tried tighten it and it only got worse. Um, but, I mean, that flare looks pretty good. Um, now let's check from the other side, you know. If, you gotta think of the, when you do these things, as least invasive as possible. So, you know, like, you you want to invade, you know, you don't want to destroy the system. So that flare is not cracked at all, that flare looks fine. So I think we're going to put a little bit of night laws on everything and try to make sure it's back together correctly and uh, we'll see if it holds a vacuum. Now if it didn't, if that wasn't the case, I actually have another video where I do this but you'll just have to cut off the flare and uh, you know put on a new, you know, put on a new flare on the whole thing. But I'm actually going to also look at, we're going to look at the inside of that and make sure it's not cross threaded or the threads are destroyed kind of hard to show on a video but uh let's see so those threads look okay a little blurry on the video end but those threads look fine uh nothing bad with them so yeah we're just gonna nylog that up and uh put a vacuum on it and see how it goes now, I did just take my gloves off to handle my phone, but you know, you guys would be proud of me. A couple of you guys commented, you gotta wear gloves. I got a whole bunch of them right there. Look at that, I'm learning too. You know, I, I read all your comments, I'm listening. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we're gonna grab some nylon, put that on it, and uh, tighten it up and try to pull up. Oh, there it is. I just want to show it. So this is just this Nylog blue gasket and thread sealant. People swear by this, and this is one of the few things that manufacturers actually use, like and actually will endorse. Like they won't endorse leaf lock, they won't endorse all these other things. Nylog they will. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit on the threads right there. Just put you know a little bit around it, and then I'm actually going to put it a little dab on my finger. Like so, I'm gonna put it on the mating surface itself. Now there's probably enough oil to do this. We, we probably don't even really need to do nylog. Maybe the oil would be good enough. I'm just gonna, you know, I would like this to work. 
so um, you know just <laughs> I would like to go home <laughs> if I'm honest so we're just gonna there we go just a little you know group of it and we're gonna do that now also I wanted to mention I don't have oil on my truck don't have oil on my truck so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if it runs if it doesn't run very simple we're going to push the oil out of one of the compressors that have oil and we're going to run it at a lesser capacity because a lot of times on call you got to think how can i get this running without opening up a store just because it's you know it's the weekend or whatever and it's hard to do but you see that's fit up nice and snug now and now we're uh, we're going to just try it out and see how it works so you can see that i just pulled a 29 inch vacuum on uh the side where you know it was and it pulled right out of it so there's something that's leaking just making sure so what we're gonna have to go through now is we're gonna have to go through try to find what's leaking making sure it's not I'm just gonna try to see if we can find it with um by feeling where it might be suctioning now I went through and I uh probably still leaking in the air so I went through and I wiped down everything with a rag I just wanted to mention this do your best to clean up the oil because seeing oil is a tool so if there's oil all over your machine room all the time the other technicians that you work with or even yourself if you have store ownership of some sort won't be able to uh, recognize when there's more oil leaks because you never cleaned up the previous oil that was there so that's just my two cents on it. I know we're on call, but you know, so it's kind of like, you know, do what you can, don't go crazy, come back during the week, but like while you're waiting for vacuums or whatever you're waiting to do, it is what it is, so. But anyway, basically what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna open up, so this isn't working, right? That's not working. We'll watch, I'll show you. It goes right down. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually open it up um, just for like a minute, not a minute, just for a couple seconds, just enough to squirt 5, 10 PSI of pressure in there. And then we're going to go through and we're going to see if we can find the leak with um, the soapy bubbles. I'm pretty sure it's just leaking from the same place and uh, we're going to try to tighten it more and more. And then if it doesn't work, uh, we're going to see if I have a nut on my truck or we're going to have to reflare um, the whole thing. So. I'm actually going to soapy bubble all the areas currently. So, soapy bubble there, around there. And I'm going to soapy bubble this one too because I didn't like the way this one looked. So I'm just going to open up uh, right there, that one just a smidge, raise the pressure up a little bit and see if we can see anything going on. So, get the service wrench right here. I guess I'll just show it. Not that hard to show. So you can see it connected right here. Put this on. And that looks pretty rounded, unfortunately, but just a little crack. Just a touch. Okay? So right there, you can see. Right there seems fine, but right there, that's our leaking point. So we'll tighten it further and see if we can just tighten them the bejeebers out of it I mean what's the worst that will happen I mean it's already not working I guess it was worth a shot tightening didn't do it so we're going to have to reflare it so the reason I'm not using nitrogen and I'm just opening it up just a little bit is because uh, I don't want to contaminate the system with nitrogen so especially on these low pressure sides I'm just really really weary of doing that so Anyway, what I'm going to have to do is we're going to cut off this flare and we're going to flare on a new one. And I'm also going to inspect, uh, inspect that flare nut a little better too. Pipe cutting it. So you can see I hooked that thing on there for 3 eighths. Now the way that this jig works is you put it out about an eighth of an inch or so. And uh, then you attach this fellow on there and screw it in. Now we could take the whole thing off by unscrewing it there, moving it over there, but I know that that's working, so I don't want to risk anything else. And it's not really that hard to work in this area. So 
I put a little bit of nylog on there to grease that, so we're gonna put it in all the way and we'll see how it goes. Also, I almost just did it, but you gotta make sure your nut's on first or it's not gonna work. Uh, so the threads inside that nut, we can get a better examination. They're fine. That back part of the nut looks fine. So we're just gonna reflare it. And we gotta make sure that that flare, you see that bottom cavity? We gotta make sure that flare fits the entirety of that bottom cavity to the best that we can make it do. So there's like a seating surface back there. And we gotta make sure that flare fits from one side all the way to the other. So you can see it's just clicked on there and we're just smushing it in. We're trying to get it to fill in that space little by little. So you know, you turn, you hold it in place, you turn it just a smidge and then you just give it a second to rest and expand and you just keep going. All right, so you can see that that flare is now filled that entire space. And uh, we're gonna take this apart and we're gonna take a look. Now, unfortunately, there's a little bit of these, you know, like rip marks from the flaring tool. We'll probably have to sand those off, but we're just gonna have to send it and see if it works. So as you can see that this fits pretty good in there. Oh yeah, that fits good. I'm gonna come around the other side and take a look and make sure it seats nicely in there. So you can see, kinda on an angle, but that fills up the entire seating surface. So I think I'm gonna sand that down lightly, put some oil on it and give it a shot. Well, nylog too. Probably just nylog on it. So I cracked it just a smidge and no soapy bubbles are coming out of it. So we're gonna throw it on a vacuum. See how it goes again. Oh, it's down here. Oh, vacuum in that son of a gun right there. Throwing that on a vacuum. We'll see how it holds, if it does hold. And then uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're actually gonna isolate this compressor here if we can that's a little rusty so it might be kind of hot hopefully that service valve still works but we're going to isolate this compressor turn this one off because there's no oil in that compressor so if there is any oil in the system it's just going to go to that compressor that one has oil that one has half oil and that one has oil so we want the oil to kind of just rotate between the three compressors that we know have oil we don't want any of them to steal them and then have them play like a roulette game of going off on oil failure or something like that. I want to know this is going to work for the rest of the weekend. But anyway, that's my opinion on that. But look at that, 30 inches water column, perfect vacuum. Now if I turn that off, how's it do it? Oh yeah, that holds that just fine. 30 inches of water column, perfect vacuum, good to go. We're going to leave it on though for couple more minutes just to make sure you know it's good to go and also I gotta take care of a couple things all right so that's enough time we'll turn it off we're gonna open up just one line all the way from the compressor and uh, probably this one right here just because it's closest we'll spray it with soapy bubbles we'll find out we'll open that up we'll also check the PSI at my gauges make sure we're getting something in there. Oh no, that's only a little bit. We'll open up the other compressor then. Alrighty, so I cracked that one right there. And now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna soapy bubble this. Oh, look at that. Nothing. 66 PSI, good to go. We'll leave this one isolated, open everything else up, and then we're gonna isolate this compressor. So again, most people know how to, you know, if you watch me for a while, you know how to isolate a compressor, but I'll show you anyway. So just, you know, this shot, well, first off, let's make sure things are shut off. So obviously compressor four, shut off. Let's turn off this one right there. Compressor three is trip. Huh, we're gonna isolate that one too. No, we're gonna isolate that one too. We're gonna isolate both of them then, because I don't know why that's tripped. Whatever, we'll isolate both of them. And I'll have to come back and deal with it during the week. But anyway, you isolate the discharge, and then you isolate you isolate the oil, and you isolate the suction. You know, every, you got it by this point anyway. Discharge, so all the way down. All the way down, all the way down, and then the suction in the back. All the way down, we're gonna do that over there. And we're gonna tape those, compressor four, compressor three, we're gonna tape those over. 
put those down, put tape across them, and then lock out, tag out if you got it. And then we're also gonna go over and turn them off in the controller. All right, so now open. I actually decided I'm not isolating this compressor. Those two are open. This compressor is closed. We're gonna remove the oil out of this compressor. So this compressor was tripped. Don't know why. We're not gonna deal with it today because remember, we've got lots of product on the line. I don't know how much, you know, depending on, you know, it could be 10 to $50,000 worth of product, whatever it happens to be. Open, open. So all the oil lines are open. Everything's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on compressor number one. Okay, that's the only one I have flipped up. We'll turn it on up here. I want to make sure they're in sync properly. Yep. So this this compressor is running. So you got to be careful when you start your compressors because, in all honesty, if if everything keeps running and running and running, sometimes liquid refrigerant will come through and actually just like it'll go right into your compressor. So sometimes you want to do them one at a time. If your compressor stalls or you hear rumbling, like aggressive rumbling, um, you want to shut it down. You actually want to partially seat. So we would take this um, service valve and we would put it almost all the way up and then just slowly put it down one compressor at a time. But usually starting with one compressor is just fine. Um, and typically you don't even need to do that with these big, uh, with these large, you know, uh, uh, semi hermetic compressor. So we're going to do number two. So I staged off everything because I want to make sure that number two is going to turn on. So nothing happened. So I'm guessing oil fail for number two. Oh. Ah, so that's labeled wrong. As you can see, that would have turned on number three. No, no, no. That's not good at all. I have to fix that. So number two. So you can see, so we're gonna, we verify that that's okay. We'll turn this on, turn on number two. All right, this is running also. All right, we're gonna leave that in the trip position. And then number four, we're just gonna make sure. Yeah, you can see it's moving right there. We'll turn on number four, which is not isolated. So we'll turn this up. Oh, turn this up, turn on number four. I believe it's probably tripped on oil safety, so we're gonna hit that. And we'll let it do its thing. And uh, while that's doing that, we're actually going to, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna feed discharge, right? We're gonna feed that through my gauges into the back of this compressor. Those of you who know me long enough have seen enough videos uh, I've done this multiple times with different compressors. We have this one hooked up to the oil pump. The high pressure is gonna pressurize this compressor to like 200 PSI. It's gonna push the oil out and feed it into the suction. And then that big compressor over there is gonna suck that oil up and it's gonna push it through the discharge oil separator back into the oil line. So I'm gonna let that do its thing. We're gonna well, I'm actually going to wait for it to build up pressure first because it seems like it needs to do that. When this gets to an appropriate discharge pressure, I'm then going to use it to push the oil out of the other compressor. And while all that's working and everything's pulling back down, I'm going to sweep up all this garbage and uh, pick up all my tools. I just want to show you, I found the cause of this. See down here? Somebody unhooked all of this, so this is just wiggling. Look at that. We're going like that day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, okay? Maybe somebody took out this thing or whatever and reattached it and then whatever. So anyway, that seems to be the cause of it. So we're just letting this thing go right now. Everything seems all right. Now, I actually just letting you know I cleaned the whole area with degreaser, okay? Everywhere, now it looks way better than what it did. Still, you can still see there's a little bit of stuff, but doing what I can while I was doing it. I'm gonna sweep up the whole floor. Now, if you use degreaser, just letting you know, your, uh, if you have a battle rack, refrigeration system, like over there, it will interpret your degreaser as refrigerant uh, a lot of the time. So you will get a spike in that. 
Um, you gotta hang out and watch it. All right, so I secured that there with two self tappers. That's gonna make a huge difference on this thing. It looks to me actually like there should be some type of thing even secure in this. Maybe even secured it there originally. I think I'm gonna have to come back and try to secure it better. Um, I cleaned up the oil on the floor. I just went up there, I grabbed another broom, I just told the manager, hey, I'm fixing the stores, give me the broom. Staying down here, it's gonna be the machine room broom. A lot of managers will let you do that, just communicate with them. Um, but yeah, so, cleaned up the floor the best I could. I'm gonna come back again, probably take my shop back, go to town, but I'm on call. I got other places I gotta be, so, you know, I can't just spend the entire on call day here. Now, anyway, so, I hope you learned a thing or two about a thing or two today. I was this oil issue, an oil disaster. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, and all that. And uh, if you have any suggestions below, please let me know. Um, yeah, and uh, that's how you do it. So, pro refrigeration tip here. If you're on call, eat when you can because it really stinks at 2 in the morning. So eat what you can. I got some Singapore noodles.